Hello everyone, thanks for watching today's video. About three months ago, I uploaded a video on the functions of the gallbladder. However, when I reviewed my videos yesterday, I saw that it had not been uploaded as yet, still being processed by YouTube. So I presume I did not upload it properly. So I thought I'll do another brief video on the functions of the gallbladder. First thing to remember about gallbladder is that gallbladder is not a vital organ in our body. What do I mean by vital organ? Vital organs are the organs like the brain, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, and the liver or the pancreas, without which our life will not be possible. Removing the gallbladder does not bring us to any harm and life is reasonably normal despite removing the gallbladder. Say for example, for gallstones, the gallbladders are removed routinely. So before going into the functions of the gallbladder, I quickly recap the anatomy of the gallbladder. So this big red thing is the second biggest organ in our body, the liver. Two ducts come out of the liver, the left hepatic duct and the right hepatic duct. They join into one duct called the common hepatic duct. On the side of it, a little branch comes out, which is connected to the gallbladder. This is called the cystic duct and that is our gallbladder. Now, gallbladder size varies in size. When there is bile in the gallbladder, then it is much larger, size of a pear, a small pear. Or when it's empty, it can shrink down to very small size. So it can be from this size to a very tiny size. Below the origin of the cystic duct, the duct is called the bile duct. It comes down and it joins the second duct from a pancreas gland that red structure there is a pancreas gland and the tube from the pancreas gland which is called the pancreatic duct opens at the bottom of the bile duct and this black thing here is the first part of our small intestine called the duodenum and that big black structure there is the stomach so food comes from our esophagus into the stomach into the first part of our small intestine, the duodenum. And as you can see at the bottom of the bile duct, I've drawn these dark black lines. This represents a tight sphincter, a tight muscle at the bottom of the bile duct, which is normally closed. So muscle is like this. It is normally closed like this. It's very tight. And when we eat food, it opens up to let the bile go through. And I'll explain in a second how that happens. So what will happen is we're talking about when we're not eating food. So liver is constantly producing bile. Bile comes out of the two lobes of the liver, the left lobe and the right lobe. It comes out of the two ducts. It comes down the bile duct. However, this muscle, the sphincter called sphincter of Odi, O-D-D-I, is shut like this so the bile can't go through so bile starts building up in the bile duct and goes through this duct and stores in the gallbladder so between meals all the bile secreted by the liver goes and sits in the gallbladder waiting for the meal to come into the stomach same things happen with the pancreatic juice pancreas secretes its juice its enzymes and as I explain on my videos on the pancreas functions please do watch that video if you've not done so already then those enzymes are most essential for the digestion or breakdown of our proteins carbohydrates and also the fats and bile itself that is released by the liver is also responsible for digestion of our fats so between meals, neither the bile can go through nor the pancreatic juice can go through because the sphincter down here is quite tightly closed. Then what happens? The food comes in. The food comes into our esophagus, which is here into the stomach. Food contains fats, carbohydrates and proteins. And also in response to the food, the stomach secretes acid which is hydrochloric acid and when the food comes through with the acid and the proteins and fats into it it comes into 
from the stomach into the first part of our small intestine called the duodenum. So when the food comes into the duodenum, a substance called cholecystokinin or CCK is produced by our duodenum. There are cells in the duodenum called the eye cells. They produce a substance called cholecystokinin. Now this substance is very important. It has got three or four very important functions. It goes through our bloodstream and works on three or four different places. First place it works is on the gallbladder. Second place it works is on the stomach. Third place it works is on the pancreas and this tight sphincter, sphincter of Audi in the bottom end of the bile duct. So we ignore the functions of the stomach, but we'll talk about what it does onto, on the gallbladder and what it does onto the sphincter of Audi. So as soon as the food comes into the small intestine, the duodenum, especially food which is very rich in fat, cholecystokinin is, is released by a small intestine, goes through the bloodstream and goes through the gallbladder. And what it does, it makes the gallbladder contract, squeeze. And when it squeezes, it pushes all the bile down into the bile duct that it has been storing between the meal. And as the bile comes down, this sphincter is still shut. So cholecystokinin makes it open. So at the same time, when the gallbladder is squeezing its bile through, the sphincter at the bottom opens up. So all the bile from the gallbladder pushes through the common bile duct into the small intestine, mixes with the food, which is already present here, and helps digest our fats and other particles in the food and help neutralize the acid from our stomach. So that is the main function of the gallbladder. If the gallbladder is removed, say this bit of bile cystic duct has been cut off and the gallbladder has been removed surgically and cystic duct been shut by clips or by ties or whatever during surgery, there is no storage of bile left. So with time, what happens if you scan a patient three or four months after having their gallbladder removed, then the bile duct will be seen on the scan to be much bigger than it was before the gallbladder was removed because bile duct dilates, becomes much bigger and takes on the storage function of the gallbladder. Hence, removing the gallbladder does not do any long term harm to our body. I will also strongly suggest that you watch my videos on the functions of the stomach, the liver and the pancreas because all these things function of the gallbladder, the function of the liver, stomach, small intestine and the pancreas all work together in a very close harmony. I hope you found this video informative and I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching.